Understanding how tasks are executed in computers is crucial for software engineers. And there are three fundamental concepts that define task execution. Sequential execution, parallel execution, and concurrency. Sequential execution is the most straightforward method of performing tasks. In this approach, tasks are completed one after the other in a strict order. This can be likened to a single lane road where cars must follow each other without overtaking. Each car or task waits for the one in front to move before it can proceed. So imagine you have three tasks to complete. Task A, Task B and Task C. In a sequential system, you finish Task A, then move on to Task B and finally complete Task C. Each task must wait for the previous one to finish before it can start. Parallel execution on the other hand involves performing multiple tasks simultaneously. This is made possible by having multiple processing units such as multiple cores in a CPU or nodes in a distributed system working at the same time. This is like a multi-lane highway where multiple cars can travel side by side without any interference. Now speaking of CPU cores, you may think of a core as an individual worker inside your computer's processor or CPU. Each core can independently execute instructions, meaning it can work on a different task simultaneously with other cores. It's like having multiple chefs in a kitchen, each able to prepare a different dish at the same time. So single core processors have one core that handles all tasks. This is like a kitchen with a single chef. And multi-core processors have multiple cores that can work in parallel. This is like a kitchen with multiple chefs. So in parallel processing, tasks A, B and C would be executed at the same time on different processing units. Task A might be handled by core 1, task B by core 2 and task C by core 3. This method significantly speeds up processing time, especially for tasks that are independent of each other. Here, multiple tasks actually running at the same time on separate processing units or cores or processors. Now, while parallelism is about actually doing them simultaneously, concurrency is about managing multiple tasks. It gives the illusion of multiple tasks happening simultaneously. In reality, a single processor quickly switches between them. So this is about managing multiple tasks that may or may not be executing at the same time. Imagine a juggler with three balls. They don't throw all three balls at the exact same instant. That would be parallelism. Instead, they toss one ball, then quickly switch to another, and then another, and so on. Each ball gets some air time, and the juggler cycles through them rapidly, giving the illusion that all three of them are in the air simultaneously. So, in a single core computer system, Concurrency means the processor quickly switches between the different tasks or threads. Even though only one task is actively executing at any given moment, the rapid switching makes it appear as if multiple tasks are happening at once. In a multi-core system, you can achieve both concurrency and parallelism. Here, the operating system scheduler rapidly switches execution between different threads, allowing thread to make progress. However, in a multi-core system, the context switching can happen across different cores. For example, if you have two threads T1 and T2 and two cores C1 and C2, the following scenarios might occur. So T1 can start running on C1, the scheduler switches to T2, which starts running on C2, which is concurrency on different cores. The scheduler switches back to T1, which continues to run on C1. This context switching is so fast that it appears that if both threads are running simultaneously, even though only one thread is active on each core at a given time. Parallelism is where multiple threads execute simultaneously on different cores. In our example above, when T1 is running on C1 and T2 is running on C2 at the same time, that is parallelism. With parallelism, you can get a speed up in your application because tasks can be completed faster by dividing the work across multiple cores. Now, while parallelism offers the potential for speed up by distributing work across multiple cores, concurrency remains essential for several reasons. For example, a web server might need to handle multiple client requests concurrently. If it were purely sequential, it would have to finish processing one request before starting the next, leading to slow response times. Web servers can handle client requests in parallel, but there are hardware limitations to consider, especially around the number of cores. The number of requests a web server can truly process in parallel is limited by the number of cores in its CPU. So each core can handle only one request at a time and adding more cores or more powerful hardware to a server can be expensive. 
even with multiple cores if you have a server which is primarily waiting on io operation such as database queries file reads or network request it leads to more io bottlenecks and it may not be able to fully utilize all the cores concurrency allows the server to switch between request ensuring that each gets attention and doesn't have to wait for too long in modern systems concurrency and parallelism often work together you might have multiple threads that are running concurrently being switched between by a thread scheduler but some of these threads might be executing in parallel in different cores this combination allows you to take advantage of multiple cores to speed up your application while still managing the complexity of concurrent execution through context switching and synchronization mechanisms imagine a chef preparing a meal with multiple dishes in concurrency the chef might be chopping vegetables for one dish then switch back to stirring a sauce for another dish and then switch back to the vegetables this is like context switching between the threads in parallelism if the chef has an assistant they can work on different dishes simultaneously this is like having multiple threads running in parallel on different cores now in a combined approach the chef and their assistant might be concurrently working on different tasks and some of those tasks might be done in parallel think of it like this sequential processing is a single lane road where cars must follow each other parallelism is about a multi lane highway where cars can travel side by side and concurrency is a traffic system with traffic lights and intersections that allow cars from different direction to share the road even though only one car can cross an intersection at a time concurrency is everywhere from apps on your phone to complex distributed systems concurrency is a fundamental concept in modern software in most programming languages such as java or c c++ functions often share data this introduces the possibility of concurrency issues when multiple threads access and modify the same data concurrently it's like you have a box of crayons and if you and your friend each have your own box you can both color at the same time without any issues however if you share one box and both try to grab the same blue crayon simultaneously you might have a conflict which is a concurrency error similarly in software if you have independent data functions can run concurrently without problems and each function has its own data however if you have shared data like a shared crayon box concurrency becomes a concern when functions might try to modify the same data simultaneously leading to errors so when functions operate on separate data sets concurrency is generally not a concern concurrency errors arise when there is a shared data and operations on data interleave in unexpected ways languages like node js avoid shared memory concurrency within a single process so it is not really a concern internally however it still needs to manage concurrency when interacting with external resources like databases or file systems these resources often have their own concurrency control mechanisms like transactions in database databases like sql databases use transaction to ensure consistent operation on shared data so if two processes try to modify the same data simultaneously transactions can prevent inconsistencies but languages like java and c++ have no built-in transaction mechanism for memory access this means developers need to use additional synchronization primitives such as logs mutex etc to manage concurrent access to shared data let's consider a java program that downloads multiple files from the internet we'll use threads here to handle each download concurrently now Threads are fundamental building block of concurrency in Java. We create a file downloader class here that implements the runnable interface. In Java, the runnable interface is a contract that a class can implement to define a task that can be run in a thread. And it has a single method, run. So when you implement the runnable interface, you are essentially saying, "Hey, here is a task that I want to run in a separate thread. Put the code for this task inside the run method." So each instance of this class represents a download task that can be executed in its own thread. In the main method, we loop through the list of URLs. For each URL, we create a new file downloader object and start a new thread to execute its run method. This creates multiple threads that work concurrently to download files. The JVM thread scheduler manages the execution of these threads. it rapidly switches between them allowing each thread to make some progress before switching to another notice that the file download operations are likely to be io bound this means that threads will spend a lot of time waiting for network responses during this waiting time 
the thread scheduler can switch to another thread and allow it to progress. So in a single core system like this, concurrency is achieved through rapid context switching between threads. Again, here you can think each file download like a ball the juggler is juggling. The JVM's thread scheduler is the juggler, rapidly switching between different download tasks, threads in this case. And each thread gets a chance to run for a short time before the scheduler switches to another thread. This allows multiple downloads to progress concurrently. Parallelism is great for speeding up tasks that can be divided into independent parts and executed on multiple cores. Concurrency is essential for responsiveness, efficient resource utilization, scalability, and managing shared resources. Concurrency and parallelism often work together to create responsive, efficient, and scalable systems. Think of it this way. Parallelism is about doing many things at once, and concurrency is about dealing with many things at once. Both are essential tools in the toolbox of a modern software engineer.